All right, we back. I had to change the battery. But go ahead, bro. All right, I'll read it again. This is uh, Matthew chapter 24, verse 27. For as the lightning cometh, cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It says, for wheresoever the carcasses is, there will there will the eagles be gathered together. Yup, and like I was saying, them eagles, which when you look it up, it goes on the vulture. And them vultures, uh, and the vultures are in the, in the, in the flesh of men is gonna be in the belly of the vulture. But also, it let you know that, uh, that it's the end of uh, Esau's empire and this world is about to die, man. His rulership is about to die, man. So, what I want is that in a different translation. All right, this is, uh, <clears throat> this is the Bible hub. This is Matthew chapter 24, verse 28, the New International Version. It says, it says wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures will gather. Mm -hmm. The New Living Translation, just as the gathering of vultures shows there, shows there is a carcass nearby, so these signs indicate that the end is near. See that? Go ahead. This is the Amplified Bible. It says, wherever the corpse is, there, there the vultures will flock together. Mm -hmm. And contemporary English version says, "Where there is a court, there will there will always be vultures." So, looking at that, we that scripture is that you know when your Howard Shah show up, that's it, man. That's the end of uh, Esau's empire, man. No more, man, because he is the one that's gonna take down uh, Esau Edom. But it's letting you know. Whenever you see a dead body, right, and you see vultures over it, it's over with, man. I got another translation. Go ahead. This one's coming from the Good News translation. The Good News translation. The Good News translation. Okay. Give me what you got, huh? Right? It says, wherever there is a dead body, the vultures will gather. Yeah. You see? So that's Esau Edom Kingdom, man. It's over with, man. The dead kingdom, man. You see? All right. So, is there any more on that scripture? Uh, oh, that particular verse on down. You was reading on down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come right, on. Let, me, go ahead. let me just read uh, verse 29. It says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. That's right, man. So, what I want to do is jump to Revelation uh, 19 and 17. Revelation 19 and 17. All right, this is Revelation chapter 19, verse 17. It says, and I saw an angel standing in the sun. So. John the Revelator, you know, seen the angel stand in the sun. And then Matthew, uh, Matthew recorded to where he seen how was shot coming back, right? And John the Revelator seen the angel stand in the sun. So when he seen that angel stand in the sun, that represented that, that angel had authority. So the angel was with the how shot. So that let you know that how was shot and the angel gonna have the authority on the earth standing in the sun. You see? So go ahead, bro. It says, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the foes, the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven. See? The fowl that fly in the midst of the heaven. Just like it was saying in Matthew uh, tw uh, 24, talking about the, the eagles who go into vultures. See? Yep. Go ahead. Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great of the great most high. 
You see the great power. You see? So at the end. So that's showing you right there that the Hawashai and the angels don't have that authority, man. Right? On the earth, man. Right? You see? And that's our power, the Israelites. Nigga like you know the name of America. You see? That's our power. Go ahead. This is uh, verse 18. That ye may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of them that sit on them. See? And the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. You see? So those fowls gonna have a feast in the flesh of the people and gonna be in the belly of the fowl. In the end, right? The end of these all kingdom, man. You see? So drop that and give me uh, Revelation chapter six. Verse uh, Revelation chapter six. Let me know when you get over there. Okay. All right, verse 13, all the way down to 15. All right, this is Revelation chapter six. Today, today, uh, November 23rd, this is Saturday, 2026. I mean, 2024, I'm jumping. <laughs> man, I would be out here by that time. <laughs> Lord willing. Yeah. Too much of speaking. Man, oh my goodness. Too much of speaking. Oh my future. goodness, brother. You messing up, brother. You said 2026. What you trying to do to us, brother? You trying to hold us hostage? No, I want out of here, brother. <laughs> trying to speed up the time. <laughs> man, I'm tripping. Go ahead, bro. This is Revelation. Chapter 6, verse 13. And the stars of heaven fell onto the earth, and even as a fig tree cast her cast her untimely figs, mm -hmm. when she is shaken of a mighty wind, mm -hmm. and the heaven departed as a scroll. So what John the Revelator seen is nuclear war. And he compared that that cloud, that cloud when you drop a bomb, and it and it, you know it goes up. They let the genie out of the bottle, so to speak. As right. I say in the world, they let the genie out of the bottle, and when it goes up, it's rolling together. So John compared that to a scroll being rolled together. So that's what he was saying. You see? Go ahead. It says, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. So they, like, you know, you got scroll like this, rolling, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, rolling together, not rolling it like that. That's one way. Nah, right, rolling right, together, right. together. So that's how the cloud was doing. It was going, yeah. rolling up like that. Yeah. So that's what John seen it, seen it rolling up like that. You know, that's yeah. what he's seen, man. He's seen the future, man. He's seen nuclear war, man, in the future, man. And that's the best way he can explain it. Yeah. So there is going to be a thermonuclear war, contrary to pop belief. And Scott Ritter want America to talk to the Russians. You ain't going to stop it, Scott. I'm yeah. here to tell you. You ain't going to stop it, man. Right. You know, you ain't going to stop it. Nobody can stop it on this earth. This is the destiny of Esau, Edom, and their nation, man. Okay? It's the destiny of them, man. And our destiny and our future is to rule the earth forever in the Holy Spirit, man. Okay, go ahead. It says, and every mountain and island were moved out of the out of their places. So the earth gonna be rocking so much to where it's gonna create new landmass, and it's gonna cause tsunamis, man. And the map that you see today is gonna be more landmass. The map not, not gonna be the same, man. You look at the world map, it's not gonna be the same no more, man. All right, go ahead. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, and every bond man, and every free man, 
hid from hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. In the bunkers. You see? They hid in the bunkers, right? So John seen that, seen the, the military men, the rich men, and you know, men that was in uh, slavery, whether uh, physically or by contract, he seen them all hide together, man. They no longer. And said to the mountains, day of his wrath is come and who shall be able to stand who shall be able to stand give me Ezekiel uh, 32 and 7 Ezekiel 32 and 7 and America gonna be a desert and when this place get hit it's gonna be a nuclear winter and it's gonna block out 90% of the sunlight, the moon, and the stars, bro. You see? The brother found it out to where it said 99%, but mine said 90%. So we are run with that. Right? Huh? You said Ezekiel. What was it again? Ezekiel. Uh, Ezekiel 32 and 7. All right, this is Ezekiel chapter 32, verse seven. And when I, sh and when I shall pull, so like, and when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud and the moon shall not give her light. That's it on that. That's what I wanted, man. So it's gonna be a nuclear war, man. And in this nuclear war, the Most High gonna block out the lights of the heavens, man. You see? That's what he gonna do. So we're gonna fight for peace. Like to say, all praises to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakhakadash, Mawafla Babylon, Mawafla Babylon, Mawafla Babylon, Mawafla Babylon, and Mawafla, two-thirds, Shalom, stay strong, search the scriptures, and pray for deliverance. Through a very interesting comment um, by your former president, uh, Medvedev, where he said that we are actually looking at the possibility of third world war, World War III. Uh, you think, uh, we have seen Korea, for example, already uh, supporting, North Korea, supporting Russian military operations in Ukraine. Uh, you think that there is possibility of more nations joining on the side of Russia and more nations joining on the side of Ukraine? It's actually possible. No, это зависит от интерпретации. Многие считают, что третья мировая война уже идет, потому что это война, идущая война, это война за новый мировой порядок. И, конечно. Уже сейчас против России воюет коалиция из 50 государств. Serious moment that I come before the committee. Um, defense intelligence will reveal today that the front line is now less stable than at any time since the early days of the full-scale Russian invasion in February 22. And we've seen uh, in recent weeks a very clear escalation from Putin and his forces. They've stepped up attacks on the energy system, 
in Ukraine ahead of winter. They've stepped up attacks on civilian centres, killing children. They've deployed uh, at least 10,000 North Korean troops to the battle. <coughs> and there are unconfirmed but media reports today of Russia firing a new ballistic missile uh, into Ukraine, which they, uh, we know, have been preparing for months. So that while the Ukrainian actions on the battlefield speak for themselves, Mr Chairman, be in no doubt that the UK government is stepping up our support for Ukraine, determined to continue doubling down our support for Ukraine. And this is what I told Minister Umarov in a long call on Tuesday. It's what I discussed with the uh, defense, US Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin on Sunday. And as I told you and the House yesterday, uh, it holds a for this committee as well. I won't be drawn on the operational details of the conflict. Uh, it risks uh, both operational security and in the end the only one that benefits from such a public debate is President Putin so-called hybrid grey zone activity, these attacks on critical national infrastructure, Russian aircraft buzzing our airspace on a regular basis, cyber attacks every day. This is happening now and we've got to ensure that we've got the capability to fight that fight today as well as deter for war fighting. If the British Army was asked to fight tonight, yes. it would fight tonight. And I don't think anybody in this room should be un under any illusion that if the Russians invaded Eastern Europe tonight, then we would meet them in that fight. That would be the first point I'd make. Patrick Lancaster, right now we are here with the Russian forces, particularly the uh, Espanol Brigade. And an interesting side report we're doing on top of the overall report is we found some non-Russian fighters. Some fighters from Cuba. Snipers here fighting for Russia in, in the Ukraine war zone. We're going to have a talk to them, uh, communicate the best we can, and find out as much information and show how they fight and train. you got to open your eyes. Everything's not so simple. Think for yourself. You're not going to see this information to Western mainstream media.